Hi everybody and welcome to a special edition of Nicka O's World. I am your host Nicka O and if you're wondering what's special about this, this is my segment Men in the Fiber Arts World. If you are a returning viewer, hi, I'm glad to have you back. And if you are a new viewer, I'm glad to have you. If you're watching on YouTube and you like it, please subscribe. And if you're watching it via iTunes, please leave me a rating and let me know what you think. All my information and social media will be at the end at the credits. And if you're wondering why this is a special edition, on my last podcast two weeks ago, I said I was going to start a segment called Men in Knitting. Since I wasn't able to do a podcast last week, I thought I would make this a special edition as not to make my regular Thursday podcast a super lengthy one so y'all aren't like, is she done yet? You know, I don't want that. So this is going to be a special edition. If you guys like this as a special edition, please let me know and I will keep doing it. The reason, if you're wondering, why are you doing this? The reason why, awareness. To let people know there's men in the fiber art and they're open about it. And for Pete's sake, please stop staring at them like they're from outer space. Because they're not. I know, you probably think I'm crazy by now and yeah, I am a little cuckoo, but in a good way. Um, in this episode, I'm just going to start with a brief history and name, talk about some fabulous men that I know that are in the fiber arts. I will do another segment on this as not to make this a super long and maybe hopefully not boring, but super long. So it's not super long. First, I'm sure you probably want to know where knitting and crocheting came from and you're thinking if you're talking about men in the fiber arts why do we need to know this just hush hush people you need to know because it's part of the history and you're gonna have to deal with the glare from my glasses I'm sorry but I can't see my writing afar without them are we going anyways let's do a history of crochet since there's not a big history of it. It gained really popularity starting in the 19th century, but it dates back to Iran, South America, and China. So, yay! And in those times, men did crochet, but there's nothing really talking about men crocheting. Hmm. But we know they did. Um, in the 19th century is when it became popular. Men would knit, would crochet, sorry, talk about crocheting, but men would crochet right next to women. And predominantly then in the 19th century, they would be doing lace crochet. Like if you go to your nanas, you see doilies or, well, not even your nanas because I have them, doilies. And they would crochet up these doilies. They'd be back like on a headrest on a couch or on the arm of a chair or on a dresser or a table. And if you're wondering, well, why would they have them on the back of their couches or chairs? Well, back then, men would put all kinds of stuff in their hair and they didn't want the couch getting stained. Um, there's nothing like after like the 19th century, like... In the 1930s to 45, I'm sure there were men that crocheted during the the victory time during the war. But there's nothing talking about it. It's mostly women. However, come the 21st century, ladies and gentlemen, men openly knitting in public has become popular and via Podcast, crocheting, oh, shame on me. I keep saying knitting, I got it on the brain, but it's crocheting. 
thanks to places like Ravelry, um, Craftsy, uh, Facebook, you will see a lot of men posting their crocheted items, which, yay, or you'll see them out in public. And if you're a man watching this and you do crochet in public and you live around my area, please don't be frightened if you see this, this crazy person coming up to you looking like, ah, crocheting. I'm going to probably just keep saying that till this segment's over, but crocheting, don't be surprised if you see me go, what are you crocheting? Oh, cool. Do you have a podcast? Are you on Ravelry? Please do not freak out about that. I'm asking because I think it's awesome that you do that and you're open and I'm asking about what pattern you're working on. It's probably because I like it and I want to make it or I know somebody that I could make it for. So yeah, two people, two men that I know for a fact that crochet, sorry, my throat is dry. Probably because this is the third time I'm making this video. But anyway, two men that I know crochet are Mikey Selick from The Crochet Crowd. He owns and operates to crochetcrowd.com. Oh, I'm sorry. Three great people that I know that crochet because Mikey's partner, Diva Don, crochets as well. And awesomeness. And the third person is Ron Strong from Strong Designs. He crochets. He has a sweater. And I'm just mentioning this real quick. It's called the Boyfriend Sweater. Oh, it's amazing. I love it. Oh, I'm going to crochet it up myself. It. I want to say it was published in Love of Crochet or Interweave Crochet. I could be wrong. It's one of those two. If I'm wrong, please. <laughs> Excuse me for that. It's late here. Please correct me. I want to say it's one of those two magazines, but I could be wrong. Or it could be... Anyhow, I, I, I think I'm wrong. I'm going to stop guessing. <laughs> Excuse me again. But those are the three men that I, I follow... That crochet, I know there are more. I would love to meet them. I have on the crochet crowd on Facebook. Have talked to men on there that crochet. And I love their work. So, yeah. Next, let's move on to the history of knitting. Oh, by the way, if you're a guy and you crochet, please subscribe to my Ravelry group. I would love to have you. And see the awesomeness that you're working on. Knit, crochet, spinning. Love it. Next, I am going to be talking about men in knitting. But a quick side note. In case you're wondering why I'm doing this podcast, it all boils down to the fact that I was out at an appointment. And while I was waiting to go into my appointment, there was a woman looking over my shoulder, I was knitting, I, because I carry knit or crochet with me, this time I happened to be knitting, and I was listening to a fellow podcast, to a fellow podcaster, who I'm going to name a little later, and I was knitting along, had the earbuds in, I seen her staring, and I look over, she looks away, quick, look, oh, I wasn't staring at you, but I really was, go back, and I, you know how you could feel somebody staring at you? I, I could feel that. And I looked over and I was like, I'm like, really, lady? Like, and huh, I'm not staring, but I really was. So I went, uh, sorry, the camera's messing me up, but I raised my eyebrow and excuse me. Is that a man? She's like, is that a man? I'm like, yeah, it's a man. Is he knitting? I'm like, yeah. She's like, totally amazed and shocked by this. Like, this was some fact. I'm like, I went, really? You know, maybe it's because the way I was raised that it wasn't, you know, like, maybe she, I don't know. 
but she was like all shocked and amazed by this. But more shocked that there was a man openly it showing his craft off. And of course I had to give her my two cents and that's what inspired this segment is because I want to create awareness and I want to get rid of stereotypes. I don't like stereotyping. Don't think it's cool. Don't think it's fun. Anyways, that's that. Now, men in knitting. Knitting actually dates back to the ancient Egyptian times to like three to five century AP Romano, I think it is. I can't read my own handwriting. But anyways, it dates back to the Egyptians. And it goes back to as far as the Middle to Muslim Middle East as far back as then. And the earliest known knitting, as I said, is the Egyptians where if they seen the wall art and you could see on the wall art like toe socks, like they wore back in ancient Egypt, those little toe socks, yeah. And the Old West. Men did knit in the Old West, believe it or not. I know. Sorry if you've never seen John Wayne knitting. I know maybe there was never a Western, obviously, with him knitting. But men knit back then. Especially if they were out, like, especially if they did cattle. And they were moving cattle. And they wore socks. Oh, no. My sock. It ripped. It has a hole. Men knew how to sew then a little bit, stitched their sock. Their sock completely coming apart, or they need they had the goods to make the sock. They would knit it up themselves because the women weren't always with them. So they had to do that. And also, it was nothing back when for knitting and crocheting to be taught in schools to Boys and girls, just a thought. I know some places are bringing it back into school society, but yeah, even children in schools were taught to knit. Now, moving along from ancient Romans to the wild, wild west to the 1920s. Yes, the 1920s. Back when there was the Russian Civil War going on, the Russians introduced to the Chinese caravan men knitting because the Russian men knew how to knit. They were quite handy. They were out in deserts or whatnot and they needed to keep warm so they created knitwear. And they ran into the Chinese who were like, oh, what is that? What are you doing? I like that. That keeps you warm. You teach me how to make it so me can make it. And being there, all they had were the camels, so they used camel hair. And if you've never felt camel hair or, or had camel hair, it's warm. It's very, very warm. And, yeah, camel hair isn't as yarn, camel hair yarn, I should say, isn't as cheap as you think. But it is worth its money because I have felt it. And, oh, warm. Anyways, getting back to the history of basically the Russians taught the Chinese how to knit. And basically, as they were going on in the little caravans with their camels moving along wherever they were at. Basically, the, as I said, they used the, the camel hair. They observed camel, cam, they had, in the groups there, they had their own camel hair pullers. They would knit on, they would knit in the march, and if they ran out of yarn, they would reach to the first camel in the, in the fill, I guess, they walk, obviously they're marching like in a line, and the, the first camel... They would just reach and pull the hair. They, like, the loading, they would pull a pluck of it. And 
they would pull like a bunch to fill their hand, like a handful of yarn. Handful of camel hair right here. And they would pull it from the neck and they'd roll it in their palms into the beginning length of yarn. And they'd attach a weight to this and giving it a twist to start spinning. Not only did those men and Chinese men that learned how they do this, not only did they learn how they knit, but they learned how they spin. And I would actually love to see a video of how they possibly did this. I know, I'm such a geek. It sounds interesting. They give it a twist and then spin it. And they went on in defeating it, it the spun yarn into the thread and continue knitting. And it produced warm socks, coats, you name it. Just imagine, you know, you knit, and I'm sure because if they were in a desert, that had to be hot. You knit long and ugh, camel hair is warm. Wherever they were, maybe it was cold and it kept, they knit gloves, scarves, all that. Imagine those men doing that. Well, this leads up into the 1930s to 1945 when you had knitting for victory. Yay! I know it's not yay in that sense because it was World War II. And men, men that could not be deployed or drafted into the war helped in every little bit they could just like women if men had knitwear that they no longer wanted or the wives had knitwear that they no longer wanted they would it was nothing to rip it apart and the men would knit, help knit it back up into stuff they could use or donate to the boys overseas which I think is great and it helped it gave people a sense on the home front something to do and it also gave the men a sense of pride. I, I couldn't find, but I'm probably sure that there were men. I'm sure women had knitting, little knitting circles then. And I'm sure there were some men that were included. And come like 1950s on, it was kind of like men knitting went into the closet. Boo. Why? I don't know. And it's a shame. It's kind of like during that period, men kind of became like closet knitters, I want to say. Like they were in the closet about knitting. Like, I don't know if it wasn't that it was considered manly. But again, I think during this time, there were some schools or some places in schools that taught knitting to both sexes. I don't know. Both men, women. Um, yeah, men, women, boys and girls. But I'm not 100% certain. I know, like, even, I'm an 80s baby, <laughs> and I know growing up in the 80s, you know, I did occasionally see men knitting, like, not out in public, you really didn't see it, like, if I went maybe to somebody's house, you'd, you'd see it, like, even growing up, because I grew up all over, and I'd run into men knitting, crocheting, I didn't think anything of it, I always thought it was cool. But come the 21st century and the dawn of easy access to modern technology, it's like, hallelujah, hallelujah, oh. it's open, which I am glad for. I'm glad to see it thanks to technology. Places like Craftsy, Ravelry, um, Facebook, Twitter, uh, blog posts, YouTube, I'm glad to see that there's men open about it and aren't in the closet about knitting, crocheting, spinning. I'm glad to see that and there are some fabulous male knitters. However, as much as I love uh, our girly patterns, I like to see nice knitwear for men because it's nice to see something nice. Um, as I was saying, thanks to the 21st century, we'll kind of touch on some men that are helping shape this. Like Benjamin from the Fiber Hooligan. He is the CEO of XRX Inc., home of Knitter Magazines 
and the host of the podcast, The Fiber Hooligan, which I will link to at the end. And also, there is Ron Strong of Strong Designs. He is not only a knitwear person, a knitwear designer, but he crochets, as I previously mentioned, and he knits. And I'm so glad that he not only makes wonderful knit and crochet wear for men, for women, but he also does it for men. I just, yeah, I repeated myself on that, but yeah, he does it for men. And I looked at him, and they're fabulous. Because the men in my life, like my knitwears, they're like, I love you that you can knit and crochet. Can you make me something? And I'm there like, uh, 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 making them that. But he leaves the option that, hey, I like that pattern on. I'm going to buy it, bud. I'm going to buy your pattern and I'm going to make it. And gift, it to, gift the item to somebody. And also... There is a wonderful, he's a new person to me. I just heard about him tonight on Facebook. And his name is Gregory Patrick. He knits teddy bears. There was an article and I posted it on my Facebook wall. There's going to be a link to it on my RAV page. He makes these cute teddy bears. They remind me of my childhood teddy bears. They're like, oh, so cute. And he also has published a couple books. Check him out. He's awesome. I'll put a link to his blog. Another person that I love, and I was talking about his podcast at the Lady Cup. Mm, I'm not looking. Mm, I'm not looking, but I really am. I was listening to Steve from from Dramatic Knits. He knits and he spins. And him and his leading man have. A yarn, they dye their own yarn. I want to say yarn shop. And their fry, their yarn that they dye is gorgeous. And since he does, teaches, teaches theater, he has the yarns named in like Showstopper Colorway, Leading Man, and stuff like that. The gorgeous. I think one was Jazzercise. I could be wrong. However, I can't wait to buy a couple skeins of his yarn. However, there is a yarn that I wish he, him and his leading man would make because I think it's go, will be gorgeous. And it happens to be my favorite movie, if you're watching, Steve, is Breakfast at Tiffany's. I love Audrey Hepburn. I think she's a classy lady, which we don't have many classy ladies today. I love that whole Audrey Hepburn air. She's very classy. And Breakfast at Tiffany's is my favorite movie. Oh. Anyways, I'm going to stop gushing over that. But yeah, he does that. And then there is in his, sorry, my brain was not working. In his podcast. There is him and his co-host Callie, or vice versa. They do a they podcast together on Dramatic Knits. It's a video podcast. It's great. Check it out. Leave the link below for you guys. And they have a raft page. Another person that knits, it's a couple. Darren and his wife Amy. They have a podcast, Knitting in Circles. Darren knits and he spins. Yay! I love his knitwear. I love his socks that he finishes. He knits socks and I think it's great because you don't see very many ma male sock patterns. I could be wrong. I mean, vanilla socks, plain socks can be for men, but it's nice to see it. He just recently finished a sweater. I think the name of it is Forest Ranger. I'm not 100% certain on the name of the pattern, but it is gorgeous. I love this sweater. It's a very nice male sweater. It looked gorgeous. He did a great job. He did a 
great job on it. His wife helped him with it. I think, like, sewing the ends maybe if that. I mean, heck, I even need help sewing ends in a mind that wear at times. Fabulous! Oh! I can't wait to see what else he's going to make next. There is also a friend of mine. I watch his podcast on YouTube. His name, it, he goes by Turbo Knitter. Oh, he mainly knits for charity. However, his work is gorgeous. Glad to see it. And I think he's recently getting into spinning. That about covers it for the men that I'm going to talk about. If there's anybody that I left out or I should talk about as well, please let me know. And I will include them. If I don't have any correct, if I have wrong information on something, please feel free to correct me. If you're wondering why I'm not going into detail about these men, I am actually going to go on it on my next segment of Men in the Fiber Arts. So look for that. There's going to be a second part to this Men in the Fiber Arts where I go, I cover more in depth and detail. Like next week. I will pick one of the fabulous men that I just mentioned and talk about them. Like, if they design patterns, if they knit, if they spin, you know, they spin, you know, what they're doing. And maybe get a little bit more information. So please tune in. It will not be on my Thursday episode of my podcast because, well, it would make it too long. I will put out another sequel to this. Let me know if you guys want a, the second sequel to this on a Friday or if you want me to put it out next Wednesday again. Please let me know. If not, I will just put it out next Wednesday. So let me know. And there will also be a, a topic started on my RAV group called Men in the Fiber Arts where it's de dedicated to you guys. And... Feel free to type in there, you know, talk, we can talk about all kinds of different things. If there's male knitters you want me to check out, or if you're a male knitter or crocheter, please join that conversation. Or if there's, like I said, somebody I should check out, put it on there. I love feedback, and I will see you guys Thursday for my regular scheduled episode. If you have any questions, or you want to comment me about something, I will put my email at the end of this show where you can contact me. Until then, I will see all of you Thursday. Bye. Oh, and that's this Thursday. Bye, guys.